Hey guys, Roger here, and a few weeks ago I was at IFA in Berlin with ASUS for a first look at their new range of laptops, including the ZenBook S with up to 20 hours of battery life, and also the ZenBook Flip, which has a stunning 4K display. The laptop that really caught my eye though was the ZenBook Pro 15, which has a second display that ASUS call the screen pad built into the touchpad. With a big thanks to ASUS, I've been using the ZenBook Pro 15 for the last four weeks, and so now, this is my review. This really is a great laptop. It's built well and has a premium look, and the specs are very good too. This model has a Core i9 processor, 16GB of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics, a beautiful 4K touchscreen IPS display, and also 512GB of storage. There is also a fingerprint reader, and of course that second display called the screen pad that's built into the touchpad. On the left hand side of the laptop you'll find the power connector, a HDMI output, and two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. On the right there are two USB 3 ports, a micro SD card slot, and also a headphone jack. There is also a mic and VGA webcam, which isn't anything amazing, but it does get the job done. Underneath the laptop is where you'll find a pair of speakers, which I think have been pretty good. They're not going to blow you away, but the sound quality is good, and for speakers of this size, the bass is good too. Included in the box you'll get all of the usual paperwork, a USB to Ethernet adapter, and also the 7.7 amp power adapter. There is also a small guide that shows you exactly how to use that screen pad. Both the top and the bottom of the laptop are metal, and there are no loose or flimsy parts either. And I think the colour of the laptop, which ASUS call Deep Dive Blue, with those gold accents, really does add to the premium feel as well. So the keyboard is a great size, and the keys have a nice feel to them. They're responsive and also have a fairly decent travel distance. This keyboard is also backlit, although I normally turn that off, but nevertheless, it's a great feature to have. Below the keyboard, of course, is the screen pad, which, by the way, I think is fantastic. I wasn't sure at first how useful this would be in real-world use, but after using it every day, I've realised that there are so many ways you can make use of it. And when you boot the laptop for the first time, you'll see this introduction, which explains exactly what the screen pad can actually do. In screen pad mode, you're able to launch mini apps that ASUS have designed specifically for this mini display. It can also display special tools for software such as Microsoft Office and also playback controls for YouTube, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Something that got me even more excited though was the fact that you can use the screen pad as a normal second display. Now yes, that screen is small, but it's been extremely handy, especially when I've been using the laptop out and about and I don't have access to an external monitor. The main display is absolutely stunning. It's 4K with a 100% Adobe RGB colour gamut, and also it's Pantone validated, which makes it ideal for creatives working with video and graphics. It's also a great display for consuming video content, such as YouTube for example. It's nice and bright with vibrant colours, and of course with this kind of resolution, everything is very clear. I would say, apart from the screen pad, the display is one of the best things about this laptop. When it comes to performance, the ZenBook Pro 15 has been able to handle everything I've done. I've taken it everywhere with me for the last four weeks, and it does have a little bit of weight to it at 1.88 kilograms, but that's really not too bad compared with some laptops. Regardless of the weight though, I love having a laptop that's powerful enough to do pretty much whatever I need it to. It has a 71 watt hour battery, which has been giving me about five or six hours of use. Now for some people, that simply won't be enough, but that battery life will vary depending on what you're actually using the laptop for. Gaming on this laptop has been respectable, 
Yes, I do play Fortnite and with medium settings, it's been running really well. If you start to push the settings up higher though, you will notice that performance starts to suffer, which is fair enough as this isn't a dedicated gaming machine. I've also tried streaming Fortnite 2 with OBS and as long as I kept the settings at a sensible level, it coped with that just fine. I really don't think anyone will be using a device like this as their main streaming setup, but just out of interest, I wanted to give it a try. I've also started using DaVinci Resolve for video editing and so far I've been really impressed with how smooth the software runs and also how quickly it renders the video I'm working on. Although it will still take me some time to learn how to use the software, it's great to know that this laptop can handle video editing with 4K files easily. This laptop does have a premium price tag, but it packs a lot of features and it does have great specs too. If you're a creative or power user like me, I think the ZenBook Pro 15 is a great choice. It's a very capable laptop that will be able to handle most things that you throw at it. One thing I will say is that it really is a fingerprint magnet, so if you decide to buy one, be sure to carry a microfiber cloth everywhere you go. Also, if you'd like to know more about thermal throttling, do check out the ZenBook Pro 15 review by Matthew Moniz, and I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Also, if you want to know how I'm getting on with this laptop, make sure you follow me on Twitter, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss my next video. I'm Roger with Life of Tech. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.